Once upon a time, there was a man named Gold Roger, and he was king of the pirates. He had fame, power, and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. Before he was hung from the gallows, these were the final words he said. My treasure, why, it's right where I left it. It's yours if you can find it, but you'll have to search the whole world. And thus the great age of pirates began, where many people set out to sea to find what Roger left behind, and to gain the ultimate sense of freedom this world has to offer. Cut to a small harbor village somewhere in the east. A pirate crew was using it as their base of operations, even though they're pirates, they're not the pillage of sort of type. Instead, they just want to have a good time like all pirates do. One boy in particular wants to go out to sea with them, but the captain says no. No way a kit could survive the harshness of the sea. That captain's name is Shanks, and that boy's name is Monkey D. Luffy. Shanks takes every opportunity to make fun of Luffy, such as giving him milk when true pirates don't drink it. Uh... Point is, Luffy's just too young, and, and the sea is just too dangerous for the young lad. But Luffy still begs to be let on the crew. It's going to take a lot to convince him otherwise. But, lucky, but luckily, or unluckily for him, meet Higuma, the bear, and his merry man of m mountain bandits. Higuma doesn't have the highest respect for pirates, and makes no effort to hide it, especially when he finds out Shanks and his crew drank all of the grog in the beer. But bar. The bandits leave, and Shanks is left cleaning up the mess they made, much to Luffy's frustrations. He renounces Shanks as a role model and goes to find a new one. Oh, well, maybe a certain marine hero, Luffy, huh? Huh? Shanks tries to stop Luffy, and he and the rest of the bar and Luffy himself are shocked to see Luffy's arm stretching. Horrified, Shanks looks over and sees that Luffy ate the gum gum fruit he got from the enemy that he brought into the bar. Unlocked. And with the lid up. Uh. Well, Luffy is now a rubber boy, capable of stretching and so much more. But right now, he is basically a glorified anchor since when one eats a devil fruit, the sea becomes their enemy. Well, enemy or not, that's not going to stand in Luffy's way of becoming a pirate. He'll just never have to fall into the ocean ever again. Yeah, good luck with that, Luffy. Later, the doors of the bar burst open. Hikama and his merry band of mountain bandits have returned. Glad to see that those whiny, cowardly pirates are gone, and they have the bar all to themselves. Luffy opens his big mouth when they start talking shit about Shanks, uh, and Hikamata doesn't take that too kindly. He and his men start beating Luffy, and Hikama is just about to kill him. When Shanks arrives in the nick of time, like before, he makes fun of Luffy be before growing dead serious. Listen up, bandits. Whether I'm sprayed with alcohol or doused with food, hell, even if I'm spit on, most of the time I'll just laugh it off and forget about it. But if you hurt a friend of mine, you'll pay for it, regardless of your reason. This right here made people keep reading One Piece. Clearly outmatched, Hikamaz makes his escape with Luffy in tow. Where? Why out to sea, as no one would expect a mountain bandit to go out to sea. However, much like Luffy, Hikama wasn't aware of the dangers of the sea. Such as sea kings, giant leviathans that lurk in the waters. Sadly, he finds that out a bit too late. And it looks like Luffy is going to be next on the creature's menu. Luckily, Shanks is there to save the boy and scare the sea king away. But even though Luffy is safe, he can't stop crying. Mainly because the Sea King took Shanks' left arm before he could save Luffy. But Shanks just laughs, laughs it off and tells Luffy it's okay. After all, what's an arm compared to a boy like him? A while later, Shanks and his crew are heading out. They use this town as their base for a bit too long. Luffy is there to see them off, but has no interest in joining their crew now. After seeing what it truly means to be a pirate and the dangers of the sea firsthand, Luffy knows he is not strong enough, so he'll wait and form a crew of his own. A crew much stronger than Shanks, and one day, Luffy will be a great pirate much like Shanks. No, but no, scratch that. Luffy will be king of the pirates. You're, you're goddamn right. 
After seeing that declaration, Shanks gives him his straw hat, his most important treasure given to him by his captain beforehand. And Shanks makes Luffy promise him that when he becomes a great pirate, he'll give him the hat back someday. And now Shanks heads out to sea, and before anyone knows it, ten years have passed, and Luffy is ready to face the dangers of the sea head on. Ready to face the many, 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 many challenges that await him on his voyage of destiny. And so begins the greatest story ever told. Well, this is uh, suddenly relevant again, like... I kid you not, like... When I went to, to, to read this chapter, uh, be, uh, before I started making this video, uh... Uh, and the and the very next day it was revealed that 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 in chapter one one thousand and seventeen that the the origins of of the gum gum fruit will, will be hinted at like that was freaky I, I'll tell you just I was not expecting that but yeah so yeah uh, uh what the hell I don't know what when I'll get to talk about this but. Okay, so basically, in the most recent chap, in chapter of One Piece, chapter one seventeen, uh, there's a character called Who's Who, uh, who was a member of, of of the world government and was escorted to escort to the devil fruit, the the, the gum gum fruit to, to uh, I assume uh, um, a secure location, but then Shanks uh, stole it, and. Uh, so, so, and that's why he had it uh, while he was in uh, uh, Fusha Village, and lo and behold, Luffy ate it. Uh, we we know Shank stole it uh, because it was confirmed in the very next chapter, chapter one, uh, one thousand eighteen. So yeah, why did Shanks want the fruit? Uh, who knows? Why did the world government really want that fruit? Who knows? And who is who's who? Who knows? He does. Uh, all that we do do know about it is that the world government really wants that food to just, just be locked up tight, mainly because they punished who's who, a member of, of CP9, one of, one of their top secret secret organizations, and he was uh, compared to Rob Lucci back in his day, and they just. Th threw him in jail with, with with no signs of forgiveness like that that tells you a lot about how important this damn fruit is uh, yeah um, I actually put off uh, making the, the this video for a full week until we got the next chapter to see if there any more uh, information was revealed about uh, the gum gum fruit or maybe the wall government and about the food itself, no, aside from for confirming that Shanks did steal it. But we do know that but maybe the fruit has some connection to uh, what, what was revealed in that chapter. The sun god, god Nika. Uh, honestly, N Nika deserves a, a whole discussion a video uh, to, to uh, themselves, but... Yeah, basically, one while well, who's who was in jail, uh, he heard about uh, the sun god who was who was a savior for all the slaves in the world. So, and apparently, apparently, it's something the world government really doesn't want anyone to know about. So, yeah, did Nika have the gum gum fruit? Did Nika, or uh, is Nika Joy Boy? Did Joy Boy have the gum gum fruit? We don't know. We're we're just gonna have to wait. Uh, so, yeah, that's the most relevant stuff out, out of the way. Uh, now, oh, hang on. No, uh, thirsty. Uh, anyway. Now, the main reason I wanted to, uh, to uh, make a video about this chapter is, is just to compare it to One Piece as it is right now. You know, like, like this chapter was made, like, uh, 20 years ago, 
and, and, and the most recent charter was re was released last Sunday, so yeah, stuff change. Uh, well, and the biggest one is that the uh, the art, like now, it could just be that in right now in the in the arc we are in, Wano, uh, Oda is taking a, a liberty with the water and and making it a bit more detailed, and that could be it. Uh, but aside from that, you can definitely tell the art has, has has got a major bump in quality over the years. Yeah, and now, and now, uh, it, now in this chapter specifically, uh, th there's a lot more, uh, 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 the what's the space between the panels called? There's a lot more of that, especially at, at the top. So yeah. Well, 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 there's hardly any of that uh, nowadays, so, yeah. Uh, also, one thing that I was kind of confused about, like, in the first first few pages, the, the artwork was a lot more uh, detailed, like, or colored in, or kind of colored. It, 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 it's still all gray and black, but it was, but it was, uh, the color was sucked out of it, out of it, out of it, because because of the because that's standard of manga uh, uh, yeah the first four pages uh, were colored like that before be, being put into the volume so when uh, so when the so when the standard uh, manga art style kicked in I think that's what you call it I'm not sure uh, it was really no no noticeable like like I, I I know that's a special thing thing so I won't uh, won't harp on it too much but it, it but it but it was uh, distracting especially uh when when you look at uh, Hikama's coat you know okay uh now yeah and one thing that was really interesting when while reading this chapter is that pretty much everything that was uh, said and mentioned here was greatly expa expanded on later in the story. Like devil fruits, we know about that the, there are multiple different kinds of devil fruits, subcategories, uh, the, the reincarnation cycle, pirates, like like what it means to be a captain, your responsibilities, the, the jobs on the crew, uh, the lore, oh my god, the lore, oh, uh, so 400 years ago, two... A, a storyteller teller met uh, met an angel 800 years ago. Uh, so something really, really, really bad happened involving the world government happened. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, the the giant elephant in the new world. Uh, Wano, uh, samurai, the marines. Pretty much everything was greatly expanded upon uh, as as the story will progress. Uh, which is really, really uh, interesting. Like seeing, seeing, like seeing Oda plant plant the seeds in the very first chapter, and then watching them bloom. The that are knowing how they would bloom further down the line was really interesting to say the least. So and, and really cool. Uh, and there were also new concepts in, introduced. Uh, hockey, though, though, though. Although Conqueror's Hockey technically made his debut here, but we didn't know about it at the time, and I there's nothing in their artwork really to uh, to showcase that that, that Shanks used it. Uh, so yeah, and finally, like st stuff that that was mentioned like once or twice were suddenly um, brought back to relevance again. Uh, the one example that, that comes to mind is Captain John in Theater of Thriller Bark. Bark, uh, I didn't uh, talk about him, uh, him uh, as well as the other general zombies all that much because they were immediately stomped out by or Ors in that video. But yeah, it's revealed that long ago, uh, 38 years ago, he was part of uh, the pirate, the the Rox's pirate crew that just that was that was, that was probably the biggest uh, threat to, threat to the world government before Roger became king of the pirates. So yeah. So yeah, like, and it's crazy that Oda is master at planting all these seeds, seeds, uh, seemingly, seeds, uh, so, so, uh, so cleverly that, and seemingly weave them together into a really good story, like, like, 
like to mention the Sun God again, there have been moments where a Sun God has been mentioned before. Uh, who's who talked about him in chapter 1018. So, yeah. That's really, really cool. And now I say all that, but we still haven't got a Shanks backstory. <sighs> now, that's I'm not saying that we don't know any more th any more about Shanks than we did at chapter one, but but like uh, we know he was on Roger's crew and he was best friends with Boggy. That was that was actually revealed out pretty early on. When, when uh, Buggy uh, D. Clown made his debut. But still, what about what Shanks was up to before that? His childhood, how he was raised, how he joined Roger's crew? That's all a mis <coughs> mystery, sorry. And and a part of me, and part of me of that, uh, and a part of me uh, finds that really frustrating, you know? We're, we're a thousand chapters in, and we still next know next to nothing about the guy who inspired Luffy to go out to see him become a pirate. <sighs> Oda, you better have a really, really uh, tragic backstory with Shanks. Um, the, uh, that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, yeah, and those are my overall thoughts about uh, Chapter 1 of Rope One Piece. Uh, Romance Dawn. I'm that guy with the tripod, signing out until the next video. See ya.